Hey there, the disintegrating situation in Ethiopia has held the majority of my attention in recent weeks. I have some more extensive thoughts on that conflict that I hope to get to eventually. But a week or so back, a retired U.S. Admiral, James Stavridis, writing in the pages of Bloomberg, suggested that the U.S. military should intervene in Ethiopia, among other reasons because he wants to stop a Rwanda-style genocide there. And because he knew so little about the subject he was discussing, he suggested a course of action that would make a Rwanda-style genocide in Ethiopia more likely rather than less likely. I found that mildly infuriating, so today we'll be comparing the Rwanda of 1994 to the Ethiopia of today. I've been meaning to talk about Rwanda for a while. The standard version of the story is laid out in Samantha Power's Problem from Hell, an account I read to prepare for this video. Power's chapter on Rwanda movingly tells the story of the horrific 1994 genocide in which Rwanda's Hutu majority murdered an estimated 800,000 Tutsi people. Samantha Power's tremendously influential take is that this horrific crime could have been stopped if only some wealthy, more militarily capable outsider had gotten involved. That's the standard story that Stavridis probably believes as well. The problem with this account is it leaves out the fact that if it weren't for actions by the French government, the genocide probably would have been much smaller. In fact, it's possible that there wouldn't have been a genocide at all. Rwanda's genocide was made immeasurably worse by a rich world intervention, not by a lack of such an intervention. This probably isn't something you've heard before, so I think it makes sense to talk about my sources. Uh, Samantha Power's chapter on Rwanda is 60 pages long, and it barely mentions France. It's mostly about the U.S. government lack of response and the PTSD of the Canadian general on the ground. She barely mentions France, but importantly, it doesn't contradict the story I'm telling here at all. She just sort of doesn't mention it. There's a paragraph out of 60 pages on the French intervention uh, at the end of the genocide, and there's literally just one sentence that points out that the French were the main patrons of the genocidal government in Rwanda. But that's not something she wants to talk about. Um, Martin Meredith's account is only 39 pages long, but it provides infinitely more context on what actually happened in Rwanda. Martin Meredith's Fate of Africa documents how France armed and propped up the genocidal government in the years leading up to 1994, helping it fend off an invasion of Tutsi rebels. The Rwandan government's soon-to-be genocidal military apparatus was largely created and funded by the French. With French assistance, Habyarimana set in motion a huge expansion of Rwanda's armed forces. From the time of the invasion, the army grew from a force of 9,000 men in October 1990 to 28,000 in 1991. France provided training staff, counterinsurgency experts, and huge quantities of weapons. It financed, armed, and trained a presidential guard, an elite force recruited exclusively from Habyarimana's home district. It also facilitated arms contracts with Egypt and South Africa. An estimated $100 million was spent on arms supplies a vast sum for a tiny, impoverished country. Much of the money came from international funds, quick dispersing loans under a structural adjustment program intended for economic development. Now, of course, the French government didn't want a genocide to happen. Just like the Obama administration featuring Samantha Power didn't want to steal a decade of economic development from some of the world's poorest countries in North Africa and the Sahel by destroying Libya in 2011. But the lack of bad intentions does not excuse these incredibly irresponsible actions. After the genocide started, the French did intervene and they may have stopped the slaughter in a few places. But the main effect was to help their clients, the Hutu Genocidaire government, escape to the Congo, where Rwandan spillover helped tip that unhappy country over into a war that killed something like six million people. That's something that enlightened foreign intervention has a disturbing habit of doing turning crimes against humanity into holocausts. 
Not so fast, Rob, you may be thinking. What we've got going here is sort of a classic uh, she said, he said situation. Uh, Samantha Power is a widely respected stateswoman and the uh, newly appointed head of the U.S. Foreign Aid Agency in the Biden administration. And who's this Martin Meredith character anyway? Some curmudgeonly British journalist? Maybe he's making stuff up because he hates the French. Well, uh, in 2021, uh, Meredith's account was confirmed in large part by the French government. This is the second French government inquiry into its role in Rwanda. In 1998, four years after the genocide, a French parliamentary investigation found that French behavior in Rwanda had been exemplary or even heroic. But 27 years have passed now. Francois Mitterrand, the French president in 1994, has been dead for a quarter century. The presidential report released this year confirms the grim version of events laid out by that British journalist. While it's careful to point out that France didn't want a genocide, it concedes France's heavy and damning responsibilities. So yeah, please stop using the Rwandan genocide as a justification for rich world military intervention. In fact, it's the strongest argument possible against outside military intervention. But I want to go a little further than that and talk a little more about Admiral Stavridis' comparison of Rwanda and Ethiopia. Because in one respect, he's actually not that far off. If we intervened the way that Stavridis wants us to, then I do think there's a distinct possibility that we could turn Ethiopia into just as horrific a situation as Rwanda in 1994. In 1994, France was backing a loser. Juvenal Habyarimana had ruled Rwanda for over 20 years as a dictatorial Hutu chauvinist. Exiled Tutsi forces launched a civil war against his regime in 1990. Now, the French hated this because the attack was launched from Uganda, a country that is traditionally more affiliated with the English-speaking world. The French government chose to continue to support this loser dictator, even going so far as to send troops to fight on his side in a civil war because this loser dictator spoke French, and the French government didn't want to see English-speaking Africans get ahead. It's a pretty lousy reason to fund the murder of 800,000 people, unintentionally. Even after the Civil War supposedly ended in 1993 and a new transitional government was supposed to start, the French continued to arm the failed Hutu nationalist regime and arm its military. Today, in 2021, the United States also appears to be backing a loser. In November 2020, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed fell into a genocidal war against the Tigrayan people. Much like the Tutsis in Rwanda, the Tigrayan minority used to run Ethiopia, though it was a lot more recently. Abiy Ahmed is an even bigger loser than Habyarimana was. In the spring of 2021, the Tigrayans took back much of their province and crushed big chunks of the Ethiopian army. In recent weeks, the Tigrayans have won further victories and are marching on the capital. Now, the U.S. hates this because Abi Ahmed was supposed to be our guy. Ever since the fall of Emperor Haile Selassie in 1974, Ethiopia has been run by one flavor of authoritarian socialist or other. This has meant very different things in different times, but some form of state-led economy has survived at least one violent transition of power at this point. Abiy Ahmed was supposed to be different. He's all about free speech and political parties, but the U.S. government was probably more interested in the fact that he was pro-business and seemed interested in selling off all those state companies. Unfortunately, he also seems to be failing, and it also seems pretty likely that he's a genocidaire. And that's what makes this intervention idea from Admiral Stavridis so mind-boggling. If you want to be really, really charitable to the French, you can construct a somewhat plausible argument that the French government had no idea what this Hutu regime they were supporting in Rwanda was capable of. But the whole world knows what Abiy Ahmed is doing today. 
He is rounding up Tigrayans in the territories that he controls. He is sending militias from other ethnicities into Tigray to rape and murder. The scale at which he is using those genocidal tools has not been established yet, but it is very well established that Abiy Ahmed is blocking humanitarian aid to Tigray, and he is therefore using starvation as a weapon of war against an entire people. That's genocide, folks. Stavridis can claim to be even-handed, the French claim to be even-handed in Rwanda as well, but a foreign-imposed ceasefire at this point means stopping the Tigrayan forces' momentum before they can establish a humanitarian corridor to Djibouti or Sudan. It would put the Tigrayans back at the mercy of a man who has demonstrated his willingness to exterminate them. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed isn't rigging the court system to knock down the houses of an embattled minority. He isn't setting up nasty re-education camps to crush a religion. No, Abiy Ahmed is plausibly accused of real deal, hardcore, 20th century style genocide stuff. And Admiral Stavridis wants the US military to intervene to keep that guy in power. Of course, that's not what Stavrida says in the article. No, he just wants to set up a ceasefire to keep the plausibly genocidal Abiy Ahmed from losing. That's almost exactly what France did for juvenile Habyarimana's Hutu regime in Rwanda from 1990 to 1994. An outside power, the French, kept a spent and losing force in power, and that losing force, backed up against the wall, launched a genocidal last-ditch effort to defeat its enemies. And I'm not saying this is exactly what would happen in Ethiopia if the United States intervened. For one thing, Ethiopia is like 10 times larger than Rwanda on almost any metric that you look at. For another thing, despite all the crimes he has almost certainly committed, Abiy Ahmed is really infinitely more legitimate than Rwanda's Habyarimana was. He could, despite the fact that he's lost multiple armies, still win the war. Ethiopia's prime minister may even have legitimately won an election among the majority of ethnic groups that he is not currently trying to starve to death. The Tigrayans seem to be widely hated, and very few non-Tigrayans in Ethiopia want them to take over the country again. This is a horrific civil war. It's a nation being forged in blood. Whoever wins is going to do so by committing horrific crimes. It's far better for the United States to stay out of it and not become complicit in those crimes. I believe that the U.S. government could and should have done more to stop the Rwanda genocide in 1994. But the fact that everybody knows that, and almost nobody knows that the French government built the machinery of that genocide, strikes me as a moral atrocity. I'm not the kind of person to throw around accusations of genocide denial, but if I were, the current practice of using Rwanda as an argument for foreign military intervention would definitely be something that I would call genocide denial. War is the real problem from hell. Every genocide in Samantha Power's book was made possible by the cover that war provides. But if Ambassador Power or Admiral Stavridis pointed out that it's war that is the problem, their books would be self-published and they would have failing YouTube channels instead of comfortable jobs as columnists or government bureaucrats. Over the past 20 years, US government and media have proved that above all else they are pro-war, which means in practice that they are also pro-genocide. Changing that would be a good idea. The saddest thing is I do firmly believe that there is a role for a sanely led international community in solving problems like Rwanda in 1994, Ethiopia in 2021. Back in 1994, as a country that was largely at peace 20 years after leaving Vietnam, the United States might have had the credibility to take a leadership role in favor of peace. We emphatically do not have that credibility now. To get back to that place of trust, we have got to end all of these pointless wars that we are fighting and do a whole bunch of other things besides. A good first step might be getting more Americans to learn about the real reasons that the Rwandan genocide happened.
Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments. If you want to hear more about what I think about Admiral Stavridis' Bloomberg article in depth, you can check out this two-hour presentation I did on it last week.